Hey, hello there. I've got Charlie here at the drafting table, but Charlie's not too good at drafting, so I'll just set him down for a while and he can play with Chloe. She's down here somewhere. Okay, now what we're doing is I'm gonna, uh, we're talking about cutters, making your own cutters and things. And uh, what I'm showing here, let's have a look at this. I made this drawing here. And it shows a, a cutting tool going into the work. All right. And here's the top rig. This would be like a lathe tool. And what happens is the wedging action causes the metal to split or crack ahead of the cut. And that top rig controls the direction of the crack. So... It, in some cases, if you had a negative rake, it would send the crack um, below the cutting line, and then you get a torn surface, really bad surface. So if you're getting a bad surface, one of the first things to do is, is uh, maybe add a little bit more back rake. But you got to remember, there's a limit to it, and it weakens the tool. So you can't gain in one area without losing in another. And a lot of you uh, have experience when you get a bad finish, sometimes you can speed the work up. And uh, that helps that crack or that splitting to rise away from your cutting circle. Okay. So you can adjust the, the, the top rakes of the tools. Okay, for that. I just wanted to show that. That's really basic. But I've, I've uh, had conversations with cutting engineers that, that say it's not that easy. And, well, you know, if you, if you take a complex tool like this, let me see if I can get it under the light. This is a DNMG um, 432. It's a Walter insert, and it is really complicated in its design. It looks alien in nature <laughs> almost. But there's a lot going on with this tool, a lot more going on there than with the most basic uh, carbide cutting tool here. This is just a standard AR. Uh, uh, six cutting tool see that's where it all started and this is where it is now so there's a minimum depth of cut with this tool here and it's probably you know 15 20 thousandths or something before you, you know you get a decent finish but with this type of tool you get it really sharp and the radius just right you can uh, do a uh, I commonly do a thousandths and a half depth of cut and I hit tenths in two cuts by balancing that out you know I don't take Two tenths of a thousandths cut. You can't make a chip that way. But I found like a thousandths and a half would be pretty close to a minimum cut. But I've done a, a little bit shallower. And, uh, you know, with the minimum depth of cut with a modern tool like this, there's quite a bit of deflection. So you got to balance things out. Okay, I'm going to set these away here. So you can control the finish with uh, speed, top rake, and nose radius. And always start with standard tool angles, okay, and vary from there. Always go to your standard tool angles for different materials. And um, one of the things that uh, uh, will cause you to want to uh, change uh, a tool angle is if you have only fixed speeds on machines. You know, I've gotten kind of spoiled with the variable speeds on the Monarch 10EE and, and uh, the more jig bore. But other machines like that old Miller machine has fixed speeds and they're quite a distance apart. So you might be limited to one speed only and you're not getting a good finish. So that's when you can get a little more tricky and, and add some more angles, you know, to uh, your tools. Okay, now I'm going to pull this one away here. 
Oh, get her out of there. That's genuine 3M drafting tape. <laughs> and it works quite well. Okay, now I'm going to uh, draw a line uh, across here. Okay, I'll put a little mark and I'll do it over here. And let's make a four inch cutter. And uh, so I'll set the tool here at two inches on this scale. And the cutter's going to be four inches. So I'm going to do a dotted line on that four inches. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. We'll just do a dotted line, partial line. And get it up here close on the center line. And I'll put one right across the center line. Okay, what we got to do on a tool, it, let's say this is a smaller tool, and the actual cutting diameter is going to be the protrusion of that carbide insert. And you can vary that. You know, you can, you can have it a little bit longer for uh, sharpening reasons, or you can have it a little bit shorter for cutting some really tough stuff. You know, you want it closer to the body. So, we'll give a clearance here, okay? We're going to give a clearance for that. And that's going to be the actual diameter of the cutter body that I just showed, like I just showed you. Let me get that on there. I'm slipping with it, but, you know. There we go. Yeah. When you have an accident like this here, terrible accident, you take your... You, electric eraser and you fix it <laughs> okay that's a must have make a lot of mistakes here okay so you know to save a, uh, a little grinding and stuff you can position your insert or your um let's say a carbide blank like this low below center let me get this now that I have that below center, so when it rotates to center, I have that little bit of clearance there, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So, I'm gonna take this little detailer up here, and I'll get this uh, light so it's not in the camera, and I'll bring this around. Okay. Now I'm going to set this, let's, let's give that five degrees um, rake. So th this right here, this point, is the actual cutting circle. And that's where we want the point of your uh, carbide. So I'm going to draw that to center, past center. Then I'm going to bring this other tool up. Let me stick this up out of the way. Oh, wrong lever. This thing here kind of hangs up way up high here. Oh, let me see. There we go. I got this thing really tilted at an angle. So I'll bring this one over here, and I'm going to draw this down here, right to the center. Now, this little measurement right here, it measures 200 thousandths of an inch to get that 500 uh, clearance. So what you do, when you want to cut the notch, um, oh, let me do one more thing. I need to draw this, uh, I, can, I can do it right here. I believe I can, I if I loosen this. There we go. And I can get I can get that five degrees back here. And uh, what I got to do is you got to cut a notch uh, for your a pocket for that uh, for your carbide blank to sit in and stick out to um, your cutting circle. See? Okay. Now. I tried to draw this, but it, it just doesn't show up. Now, you, to cut that notch at an angle, it doesn't have to be at an angle. You just have to find center, set it up in the mill, 
the, your cutter body and come down from the top and just move it over from center 200 thousandths of an inch, okay? And then when it rotates over to center, then you have your uh, five degrees clearance. And keep in mind, if you do this on an index head, uh, you can put more than uh, one cutter in there and make a rotary cutter. But this cutter here, what I'm using it for is a single point boring tool. And I'm using it like in the Moore head. Now, the Moore head only has a quarter inch adjustment. So I can bore a larger hole with a tool like this, see? You see why I made that like that? And it keeps the head centered. It doesn't move that far anyway. Let me stick a, a, a regular cutter in there. See, that's what a regular cutter looks like. Okay. Now, I want to show off the tool that I brazed that carbide onto. See? Isn't that wonderful? That tool, I figure, costs $2.00. And that's the beauty of brazen carbide. Okay, folks. Thanks for checking it out. I promise I'm going to get out in the shop and machine something.